I'm Judith Anderson and I am the chair of the Butterfly Garden and have been from its inception. So what can you tell me about the garden's beginnings? Okay, uh, the garden was originally a, an electrical substation. It was a blank canvas. This started because this lot was causing trouble in our neighborhood. It had become the source of a lot of gang and drug activity in the neighborhood and it was also getting a little weedy and didn't look good. So we went to TEP and we asked them if we could make this a dog park. The dog walkers are kind of the town criers in our neighborhood. They carry the news from house to house and this is where we would gather. Uh, TEP said no dogs because they didn't want balls or frisbees flying over the wall into the generators. But they said if we could come up with something quiet, they would be willing to partner with us. They said no, how about a butterfly garden? And um, we said okay. And they helped us tremendously to plant it. We got a, a small grant, a $2,500 grant from Pro Neighborhoods and that started us out and we we leveraged that into there's probably about six thousand dollars worth of materials here and the whole neighborhood got involved we had people showing up boys and girls club neighborhood people tep they provided lots of equipment they've actually put in the drip system so that everything can stay alive and we have butterflies we have wildlife here we went to the botanical gardens tucson botanical gardens and they agreed to partner with us as well to help us plan the garden so that we would know what to plant to feed both the larval and adult stages of different kinds of butterflies. And what has been your involvement with the garden? I tried to get uh, plants from you know local nurseries. Well, we ha helped plant a few of the um, plants around here when it first went in. We get them no uh, donated. Uh, I help putting them in the ground and I help with weeding. That's what I do. Well, I was on the board of directors of the Neighborhood Association originally, and then I got involved with the Butterfly Garden Board, which is a separate, smaller group. There are three of us who do weeding in the garden regularly, and this fall we have, in the last seven weeks, pulled nine city trash barrels of weeds out of the garden and pruned trees, trimmed up, and that's what you're looking at today. So that's my main commitment to the neighborhood, keeping this little 60,000 square feet clear of weeds as best we can, although the Bermuda gains on us by the day. What do you think this garden means to the community? I can't tell. I mean, a lot of times I think that nobody's aware that it's here. Our signs have been vandalized. We get tagged periodically and nobody seems to care. And then all of a sudden, when we need something, everybody shows up, so it's, it's a gathering place. It's, and I saw two little girls out here with butterfly nets the other day. <laughs> I thought, oh, it worked. Yeah, it is. It brings people together. It makes people, um, gives people a sense of pride to have something like this in their neighborhood. It's a beautiful, peaceful uh, place to be able to come and just hang out, meditate, visit with your friends, have a little party like this. It's it's great use of common space. It's fun. It's fun as well to meet local people, you know, neighbors. That's that's the nice part also. It beautifies the neighborhood, gives us something to look at. That's nice when we walk through it. The Rose Garden is pretty. I don't I guess you've been back there. We have not and yet. we have 14 or 15 rose bushes back in that corner. I can only speak for myself. I love it. I love it. I walk my dog up here every morning, pick up, you know, if trash is blown in, pick it up, uh, keep it clean, go back and take a couple of fresh roses for my, my kitchen table. I meditate, look at a rose, and there's nothing more perfect on earth. I enjoy everything in season, and I even like the weeds if they bloom properly, but then we have to be careful to pull them out before they go to seed. But we do let the weeds kind of do their thing. We have a neighbor coming in right now carrying a wagon full of cactus. This is somebody we don't know. <laughs> apparently coming to make a donation, so that's what we like. <laughs> so. 
Mm -hmm. That is so great. <laughs> what brings you to the garden today? Um, I live across the street and I've been watching the progress that they've been making with the garden over the last year. And uh, they approached me about donating some cacti because my neighbor knew that I was running a salvage cactus nursery for a couple of years. And I have a lot of uh, cacti that are available for purchase and to donate to my neighborhood garden. Cacti are very practical because they're very low maintenance. Once you get them in and get them established, then you need to care for them very, very little. Um, when I was salvaging them from in front of development, you tie a string around them in their original position so that you locate them facing the sun the same direction. Otherwise, they will get sunburned. How long has this all taken you? Two and a half years so far. So we do fundraisers like this because whoever said butterflies are free never took care of a garden like this. And uh, off and on during the rest of the year. Volunteer services happening right now in action. <laughs> oh, I'll count them out. Yes, one. Thirteen. I trust you, Mary. Yeah, I know where you live. <laughs> so how do you get volunteers? Because this must take a lot of work. It does take a lot of work, and some of it is just um, when we're out working. We have work days when the volunteers come out, and usually early in the morning, and we bring our coffee and just talk, and people stop and say, what are you doing? And we explain what's going on, and they take their dog or their bike home or whatever and come back and help. And I, you've probably seen there's a, the large butterfly sign in the corner where we acknowledge everybody who has been a donor or a contributor or a volunteer and that helps too, letting people know that they're appreciated. They've done a wonderful job of making this a nice place, an inviting place. And I, I actually have to say thank you to TEP for providing the water. Uh, as I understand it, they have paid for the water in perpetuity, and uh, they've painted the wall and overall, since even though this is TEP's property, they've done a very good job of inviting us in and letting us do something nice with it. And this is this is kind of a very, unfortunately, it's a marginalized midtown neighborhood, and there's a huge transient population. A lot of people are renters, and they don't buy into keeping the neighborhood nice. And so this is like the jewel in the Doolin Fruitvale neighborhood. Where do you hope that it'll go from here? I'd like to see this be the place that, um, where, neighbor, where neighbors can come to get their vision for the whole neighborhood, to say, this is what I want my neighborhood to be, and this is a way to look at the first step to see that we can get there, that, that there's nothing so wrong that it can't be fixed, but it kind of has to be fixed at the grassroots level, and this is a place to start the networking and figuring out how to go about it. I enjoy having a friendship with the people who live in Duel and Fruitvale because I'm from Do Dodge Flower, just on the other side of Palo Verde from here. We, you know, share a border. And um, there are great people here, and it's so nice to come out here and just have this beautiful open space that has all these flowers and shade. And not too many Midtown neighborhoods have this kind of space available. Most of it's private property. Um, you know, this being a utility space made it, you know, a whole lot easier for people to share the space. Um, I don't know. We're like in the process right now in our neighborhood trying to find some available open space. Working with the city and the county, that's where you've got to start. I'm not sure how involved Parks and Recs was in this, but Parks and Recs and urban planning are um, recognizing right now that the Midtown neighborhoods really are lacking in some nice um, open space like this where people can come and, and you know, have a nice place to to um, visit in their neighborhood. It's really nice for me. I, I think it's a great thing for the neighborhood. Personally, that's what I think.